Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick update on the Intel chipset vulnerability that we talked about yesterday. We do see some initial scanning for this vulnerability. At this point, the majority of the scans come from Shadow Server. Shadow Server is part of the good guys they do notify users that are affected by this vulnerability. If they find vulnerable hosts, they work closely with ISPs on this. They do not publish lists of vulnerable hosts like others may be doing in the future. Overall, you should have these ports blocked, whether you are vulnerable or not uh, having uh, these ports open even if you're not vulnerable does expose you to the risk of someone essentially just password brute forcing and such these ipmi interfaces and such that tend to listen on some of these ports at least at this point i'm not aware of an exploit that is attacking this particular vulnerability but always possible that there's something out there that i haven't seen yet if you see something please let us know. And SensePost came up with an interesting way how to get access to a system that does synchronize its email with a compromised email account via Outlook. Turns out Outlook has a nice feature called Forms. Now, Forms cannot be sent to a user as an email. They're used to create emails that you're sending out. And as part of these forms, you can also add scripts. These scripts are treated differently from any scripts that you may receive in an email. Outlook actually is going to phase out parsing scripts in emails altogether. And for for the most part, it's best practice for a long time to disable this. But uh, these scripts in forms, because forms are usually created by the user, stored with the exchange server, they're not received remotely, they're considered different. But if an attacker has access to your email credentials, for example, via phishing, the attacker can now deposit one of these forms with your exchange server and a user that synchronizes their Outlook instance with this exchange server is then exposed to scripts being loaded into Outlook. Overall, this is a tricky issue and Microsoft disputes whether that's a vulnerability altogether because first of all, the attacker does need to have email credentials in order to deposit the form. But an attacker can use these email credentials now to execute arbitrary code on the client, which of course does pivot access from a mail account to full shell access on a client system or multiple systems if the victim does synchronize email from multiple systems. Pretty interesting scenario and no real clear countermeasure other than preventing email access from unauthorized users. Two-factor authentication comes in mind and that probably should be a requirement for most environments like this. And if you're using Jenkins to automate your continuous integration process, it's time to update. Turns out that the latest version of Jenkins fixes a number of critical security vulnerabilities. Some of them can be used to execute code on the system running Jenkins. So this could certainly put your development environments at risk. And Google released its monthly security update for Android as past updates, it again fixes a number of critical vulnerabilities in the media server libraries. So the famous stage fright issues, they're by far not done yet. Another six vulnerabilities patched in this component alone. All of these vulnerabilities can cause remote code execution. And if you recently received a USB drive from IBM to initialize its Storevice storage system, well, it uh, may actually contain malware. Good part here is that as part of the initialization procedure, the content of the USB stick is copied to your system, but not actually executed. So the malware is not run in this particular case. 
If you do have one of these affected USB drives and you already used it on a system, then IBM recommends that you just delete the folder with the malware. Also, most antivirus products should already recognize the file as malicious. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.